My name is Matthew Wang, and I'm here with the ACE Junior Board, together with uh, Dr. Stephen Chu, who is a professor at Stanford University um, for Energy and Physics, and also served as the U.S. Secretary of Energy uh, under Obama's administration. And I want to say thank you for so much for taking sure. your time. Um, so first off, I wanted to ask, what inspired you to get into the field of energy and, and eventually politics as well? Well, um, it was a concern that perhaps the climate science were right. I went in with some skepticism, but as I began to read about it, I thought that, no, there's growing compelling evidence that the climate is changing, that it was caused by humans, and the consequences could be very, very serious. So this started around the year 2000, but grew. Um, I was given the opportunity to head Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory adjacent to the University of California, Berkeley. At first I said no, but then I realized if I could talk about these issues, inspire scientists to begin thinking about solutions that could make a difference, both in the mitigation of climate change, but also its adaptation, it would be worth it. Uh, and thinking I would step down after five or six years, but, uh, Unfortunately, President-elect Ben Obama, uh, 2008, the end of 2008, asked me to join his cabinet, to become Secretary of Energy. So, so I did. Hi, nice to meet you, Dr. True. Yeah. My name is Remy, and as a, I'm a high school junior, I just wanted to know, um, as a student who's interested in science, but also in like getting involved in politics, um, I wanted to know like what kind of challenges you had as uh, during your work for Obama as the Secretary of Energy? Like what kind of challenges you faced um, and just what that experience was? Like? Well, I mean, the challenges were, unfortunately, uh, this became a political issue. What do you do about climate change, whether it was real, whether it was being caused by humans? And if so, uh, how much uh, resources do you spend on trying to mitigate uh, what would happen? Uh, there are some people you simply can't convince, and you, I realize you just don't bother. Others you can, and so you try to try to tell people, um, explain to people uh, how important these issues are, what the real risks are, and uh, how much it would be economically much better if you could just uh, take a few steps to slow down the. Uh, the climate change. Um, but this is true in science. Sometimes you discover something new that's against the normal dogma, and the first reaction is that people reject it and said, no, 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 you're wrong. And after they think about it, they may be, because, uh, okay, you may be right, uh, but you have to go through those stages. So in that respect, it's the same. All right, thank you so much. Hello. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Sure. My question is, how has being an Asian American affected your life experiences and your career? Well, I grew up in a town that didn't have Asian Americans. There was a town of 25,000 people. There were only two or three families. Uh, so I was kind of, aside from a few, you know, when you're young, uh, nasty, racist, things from other children, you don't really think about this. Uh, and I didn't really think about being, being Asian until well into past graduate school. Uh, and, and then, um, uh, but in, you know, in the end, I am Chinese. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and now, given, given what is happening, given with this emerging Cold War, the reaction of the United States, just as in an emerging Cold War and a Cold War with the Soviet Union, there was a McCarthyism, uh, an irrational fear that becomes very unjust. Um, and so I'm a, a little afraid the same sort of thing will be happening now instead of against communists, against uh, Chinese, and including Chinese American citizens who are citizens here or born here. Uh, so I am now beginning to do what I can in order to say this makes no sense. It's not in our best interest. And it's not, uh, it, it's really not about who we are as a, as a country. Thank you so much. Okay. For the last question, I was wondering if you have any advice to give to young scientists who are also interested in contributing to politics as well. Oh, I don't know if I... <laughs> I was roped into politics <laughs> and it served my time. I probably... 
would have stayed another two or four more years. Uh, my wife had other, she didn't like DC. So, but um, I think going into politics when you're called to serve as I was, I think it's important. I think what the United States needs more than anything are technical experts who are willing to serve their country, not seeking a career in politics, but just like in a draft army. You go in, you do your thing, you, you serve your country, and then you return back to civilian life. Uh, and um, now, there are other people who are going to make a career in politics, and I think that's important too. Um, but uh, and I hope all those people do make their careers. There were in the past individuals who really did not compromise their core principles, uh, uh, both Democrats and Republicans. And so my hope is that anyone who does go into politics uh, goes in and doesn't let the, the holes of power and all this other stuff corrupt them uh, and just remain to the core principles of, of why they wanted to go into politics to make this a better country uh, and not become part of a problem. Yeah. Thank you so much.